next, presenter Sarah is going to cover opening custom pages using JavaScript and model-driven apps. Take it I away. I will. I will. Let me show you my screen. So Can I'm you do a the bit... whole thing while singing, by the way? Is that possible? Can you? Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just, she's like, is he serious? <laughs> <laughs> I could. Um, no, but I'm a bit damaged, so I, I made a PowerPoint first. But I'm not going to spend too much time on the PowerPoint, I promise. Um, so this short demo is about opening custom pages in model-driven apps using JavaScript, but may, do it like a boss and not like the MS Learn does. So you want to know. Um, my name is Sara Lagerqvist. I work as an application architect at a small Swedish company in Stockholm. I started out as a user in 2013, so I'm, I'm like an administrator background. I don't have no background in IT whatsoever. Uh, spent two years, then I turned to the dark side and became a consultant. I was awarded the MVP in 2019. I had a small break when I went through cancer treatment, but I am cancer free since 2021. And that's pretty much it. So what is custom pages? Custom pages is this thing that's been around since about two, 2021 actually, uh, that is a convergence between Canvas apps and model-driven apps. It's something in between. It's a way of extending your model-driven apps with custom, uh, with Canvas apps sort of, Canvas app functionality, but make it more part of your model-driven app. So why would you want to do that? Because you probably, if you're building model-driven apps, which Søren, I love it too. I love model-driven apps. Uh, but there's very many scenarios where the out-of-the-box functionality is not enough. And by utilizing custom pages, you can actually go around that problem. And you can go around that problem uh, still using low code before our other option was actually going to to pro code alternatives like HTML, uh, web resources, and and different sort of things. Now you can do it a lot easier. You can also do things that are uh, having multiple tables on the same screen and updating them at the same time, which is not um, a very nice experience if you try to use that in model driven apps. And also, like you can do with Canvas apps and not model-driven apps, you can connect with different data sources than just Dataverse. Um, so if you want to use a custom page in a model-driven app and have it just in the sitemap, uh, you need no code for that. You don't need my magic JavaScript. You don't need anything. You can just put it in the sitemap and that is good for use cases where you maybe want to have a wizard like experience or something that does not require a record context you want to navigate to that uh, from anywhere and this is especially good use case when you are connecting to different um, data sources but then you have different options uh, so you can have your di your custom page as a dialogue either in the center or at the side you can have it as a side pane and the difference here is that when you navigate through your model driven app uh, the side pane actually stays put so so you can like yes yeah, like the, the new outlook and age edge you know it's it stayed there um, so what is the challenges with custom pages? So without this magic JavaScript TypeScript that I'm going to show you, you can't get a record context. Just using modern commanding and just using a model-driven app, you can't get record context. In in very many cases, wanting to use uh, a custom page to, uh, for example, replace a, a center dialog. Something should happen to this record. I want to fill in some context, then save. Um, you need that record to actually be able to save save more from that record. Um, if you go to Microsoft Learn and other sites, it's kind of hard coded. The examples are hard coded on like your placement, your size, your page name. All of those options are hard coded, which is 
making your solution not very flexible. Uh, so if you have a solution that needs several custom pagers, you would need several JavaScripts and your solution would be a mess and no one wants that, right? Um, so the solution is this. I made my <laughs> friend and colleague, Benedict Bergman, um, write this TypeScript JavaScript. So it's all on his blog where he explains exactly how he written it and why. For people who don't care, you can just copy paste it. Then I wrote a blog on how to actually use it, but you don't have to read that either because I'm going to show you. OK, demo. First. Oops, there we go. First, so this is the learn site. For example, if you want to open your custom page as an inline full page with a record context, you see here that the uh, the name, the logical name of the custom page, the entity name, the record ID, this is um, the, the navigation arbit, the target that is hard coded in this example. So what you can do if you, sorry, you're in the, you take Mr. Benedict's awesome blog and he written it in three parts. So you just take these, click the JavaScript part, take these three snippets, copy paste it, save it as a JavaScript file, upload it into your solution. So you have it as a web resource. When you've added it as a web resource, a JavaScript or TypeScript, depending on, read his blog, you'll understand. Um, you'll go into your model driven app, open the modern command where you want it, if you want it from the form of your table or if you want it from the, the view of your table. In my example, I'm using it on the account form. So what I do is I add a new button, then I, instead of running formula, I run the JavaScript, I add a library, and that is where I add that web resource that I just um, uploaded in my solution. In that JavaScript, there's a function, there's only one function, it's called open custom page, surprise. Then, it allows me to send through eight different parameters in to that uh, script or into. Yeah, sorry, I was distracted. Someone came in. Um, so this means that I can use this script to open all of my different uh, pages. I just set all those setting as parameters. So here, for example, my first parameter is uh, the, the schema name, the logical name of my custom page. Uh, the second parameter is the heading of, of the dialogue, for example, I'll show you in a minute. Parameter three and four is about sending the record context. Uh, parameter five and six is about how the size of it. And parameter seven or eight is if it's going to be full screen, dialogue, side pane, or or how you want to do it. So let me just show you how this works easily. So here is my account form for Sarah's Pizzeria. Uh, up here is my modern command button. And as you could see in my demo, I put it in to be 80% of the screen. These parameter five and six can actually also be changed to numbers and take in the, the pixels that I want, but I I kind of like the, the percentage part of it because then it's um it's responsive in a in a nicer way. Uh, so let's hide you. Click and you see this is the heading that we were talking about which I can then adapt depending on my page. And uh, this is 80% in its center dialog. So let's quickly change some of this. Let's say 30% of the screen and to the side. Bear with me, fingers crossed my internet is with me. Boop, boop, boop. 
publishing, publishing. I only have one screen at the moment and you are all muted and so quiet. I'm not sure if I'm talking to myself, but. Oh, you're not, you're good. Not. We get okay. <laughs> I was gonna play Jeopardy music for us while we were waiting, right? But. Uh... Do, 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 do. I should have sang. <laughs> That's what you wanted, right? Uh, let's reload this and check if it's changed. Fingers crossed. Nope, let's reload one more time. See? And again, yes, now you can see it opens to the side like I put in at 30% instead. So by using this, again, I can, I can open all my custom pages with one JavaScript. It's really flexible and it's quick to change if my customer or, or me wants this page to open in a different way. It's just a setting. The downside, which you should be aware of, is the parameters has to be in this order. Um, th there has to be all eight of them, or you can, I think you can lose the seven and eight because they're default, default parameters in the script. Uh, but if you want to use all of these, you have to put them in, in this exact order. And the UI is not giving you any help with naming parameters. You can't, put it, like drag and drop them up and down. So if I accidentally forget to put in my schema here at the top or accidentally remove it, now I have to remove them all because my new ones start at the bottom. So it's not super user friendly in that way, but just put in your aid and try not to delete them and you're going to be fine. Um, so a quick tip besides that, to make your model driven apps extended, extended by custom uh, pages is you want to make sure your user get the same feel and look like a model driven app. And the absolutely easiest way to do that is by using the creator kit. Uh, which is a bunch of PCF controls that actually make your custom page more look and feel like a model driven app because you don't want to confuse the users with presenting them with a completely different UI. Uh, so that's one tip. Um, here, for example, is a page I created where I'm using the it's really small on my screen, but uh, where I'm using the sub uh, nav navigation to the left because this is sort of a wizard like um, page and then I'm using the detailed list which uh, replicates a view from the model driven apps um, and by that it makes this actually feel like a part of the model driven app my customer has no clue that I actually built it this more in a drag and drop kind of way uh, another tip is to look at Benedict's guide on TypeScript he keeps telling me and I have no clue. Uh, the TypeScript is the way to go compared to JavaScript, but there's a whole setup that you should think about if you want to do that. And there's a guide on his blog about it. Um, I also want to send out a small warning, like custom pages does add complexity to your solution. Only use it when it's the best solution, when it's necessary don't overuse it because you're going to hate yourself fixing stuff that is somewhat a part of a out of the box already or something like that. And if you want my slides after which you can get if you contact me, this is just uh, the, the code I use on the on start of my custom page to to actually get that parameter from the JavaScript that I'm sending down with those parameter par parameter three and four. And that's it.
I do have an email that I rarely use. If you want to contact me that way, you are very welcome. I also have a blog with a contact form that actually goes to my email. So maybe I do use it. Uh, but you can also reach out on LinkedIn. Very, very cool. Thank you, Sarah. I really love all this. Um, I love the balance you brought to it as well in the end of tips, the uh, sort of an Uncle Ben principle, right? Custom pages adds complexity, don't overuse it. Great power comes great responsibility. So uh, really enjoyed how you were showing it off. Love the jokes. You're fantastic. Really appreciate you uh, bringing the demo to the community.